This video is sponsored by Shutterstock.com. I want to let you know that they just launched a brand new video subscription service where you can have access to their full library of HD and 4K footage for less than $9 per clip. Visit the link down in the description to make your purchase today. You can also use code MOBOX10 to get 10% off any single clip or small video pack. Yo, it's Mike from Mobox, and one of the most difficult facts to overcome is that at least 80% of people watching this video are not subscribed. If you enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing. I've seen a few subscriber pop-up overlays pop up recently and thought that we could do better. So in this video, we're gonna be creating a subscribe and bell notification animation that you can use as an overlay to your videos. As always, you could download the project file and template on our Patreon linked below. Anyways, let's just jump in After Effects and get started. Okay, so jumping in at After Effects, you'll notice that I do have a lower third already made, and I'm actually just gonna use this as a reference for timing. Why do the work twice? It's called efficiency. Or laziness, I'm not sure. I wanna start by creating a rounded rectangle. Holding shift allows it to remain square and proportional. Rounded rectangles will give us access to change the edge roundness, which we'll need to transition from a circle to a square in this video. So let's start with the edges completely round and set a keyframe. We also want this shape to expand horizontally, so let's set a keyframe on size. Size will ensure that our corners don't get stretched. If we use scale, it wouldn't have this property. So let's uncheck constraint proportions so we can scale the box independently in the X and Y direction. Move about one and a half seconds forward. And now let's increase the size so it morphs into an elongated rectangle. We can now decrease the roundness. Next, we can add our profile photo. For this project, I did create a subcomp to add your photo to if you just want to use this as a template. So I'll just drag this profile photo into the composition and scale and align it on top of the rectangle. It's always a good idea that you rename your layers so you don't get confused. Just select the layer and hit enter. We need both of these elements to appear on screen, so we'll just add a simple scale up animation. Press S opens up the scale property and we'll start at zero and then go up to 100 for both layers. I want this profile photo to shift to the left, so I'll press P and set a position keyframe for the start and end positions, so they'll align with the background box expanding. To make this look smoother, I'm gonna use a tool from Mount MoGraph called Motion. It's a paid plugin, but worth every penny. I'm gonna select all my keyframes and just add some easing. There's not many things in this world that with two clicks can turn something that looks blocky and boring into something smooth and sexy. If you don't have this tool, you can use the graph editor and get your graphs to look something like this. Next are the buttons. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool again and adjust the roundness and position to fit. For the notification button, I'm just going to stick with a circle. Next we're going to need some text, so I'm just going to use the text tool. The font I'm using is Bourbon Grotesque. It's free when you sign up for the designer's newsletter. I'll link it below, but you could use whatever font that you want. Once the subscribe text is aligned, I'll show you how to make the bell icon. There's actually a complete video on how to do this that I made a while back, but basically using the bell icon I downloaded from the Google Material Design website, I just added some rotation for the bell and the bell knob. For this project, I simplified it by using the Excite tool in Motion 2 plugin, but by following the previous tutorial, this could be achieved just with keyframes. I'm gonna drag this into my project and press S to reduce the size and then move it into position. Last is the text and subtext next to the profile photo. Just using the text tool, I'm going to add some placeholder text. I like for the subtext to be about half the size of the main text, but it's up to you. Whatever you want to do here, it's a free world. Do what you want. So let's get the buttons and text to match up with the opening animation. Again, rename your layers and stay organized. First, I'm going to parent the subscribe text to the subscribe button and the bell icon to the bell button. I also need keyframes for the roundness and size of the subscribe button. We're gonna be basically doing the same thing we did for the background. So first, I'm gonna set a keyframe for their positions that I want them to be. And I'm gonna go back and align the keyframes so both buttons start at the center and the subscribe button is then scaled size-wise down to be proportional and round. Again, using the motion tool or graph editor, you can add the same smoothing that you did for the other ones. For the text, I want it to start on the right-hand side and then move into position. So press P on the keyboard, set keyframe for the start and end positions. Since everything is overlapping, we're gonna have to adjust the transparency. Selecting the buttons and all the text and icons, press T to pull up opacity settings and set keyframes for 100% and 0%. Align the keyframes so the layers become visible but without overlapping each other. 
If you need to, you can add a set matte effect on the name text with the background layer as the layer selected in the set matte settings. This will clip the text so it's only visible when over the background. You may also need to move the profile layer to the top of the composition and the background to the bottom so the buttons don't appear on top of the profile photo. Okay, so now for the macOS mouse pointers. I do have two here. One is a pointer and the other one is the finger pointer. Both of these can be found online and I'm gonna need both for the project. So I'll bring them in and parent the finger to the pointer and then scale down the pointer. I need the finger to appear when the pointer hovers over a button. So I'm going to select both layers and press T for opacity and I'm gonna be adding an expression to the pointer finger. Holding Alt and clicking the stopwatch on the finger opacity, I can write an expression, type 100 minus and then use the pick whip and select the opacity for the other pointer layer. This will make it so when the pointer is set to 100% opacity, the finger is zero and vice versa. This will give us an easy way to keyframe these transitions so you don't need to mess with a dozen or so additional keyframes. Setting a position keyframe on the pointer, I want it to start off screen and then move up into the position over the button and hold. Next, it'll move over to the notification button Again, I need a hold, so I will duplicate the keyframe. Then I want it to move off screen. Add the same easing and then check the timing. You can move the keyframes around and speed things up or slow things down if it looks maybe a little bit unnatural. Now I'll set a keyframe for transparency so I can do the transition from the pointer to the finger. Right as the pointer touches the button, I'm going to set a keyframe for 100, move over just one frame and set it to zero. I'm going to do this every time the pointer moves from on a button or off a button. So for me, that's one, two, three, four different times. Okay, we're almost done, but now we need to add some drop shadows. Add the drop shadow effect on the profile photo and adjust the settings. These are the ones that I like to use, but depending on your sizes, they might be different. You can then copy and paste this onto the subscribe button. I want the button to appear to be pressed when clicked. So you can set a keyframe for the distance and softness of the drop shadow. A few frames later, reduce the distance and reduce the softness. And then a few frames from there, you can copy the original keyframes and then paste them. Again, add the same easing or smoothing as desired, and then copy and paste this drop shadow effect onto the notification button and align the keyframes into position. We're going to be adding some color here. So we're gonna need the text to go from this gray color to white. Add a fill effect to the text and set the start color to gray and the end color to white. Ease and do the same on the bell icon. Since the bell icon animation actually starts early, I wanna move it back when the button is clicked. To do this, I'm gonna right click the bell layer and select time, time remapping. Make sure to grab the first and last keyframe and shift them back until the first keyframe is at the time you want the animation to start. One of the last steps is to color the buttons. Start with a circle and align it with the mouse pointer. So you're gonna to wanna to set a scale keyframe, set it to zero and then a few frames later, increase the scale so it covers the button. You could add a set mat to the color and pick the subscribe button as the layer and ease the keyframes. Copy and paste this circle and do the same for the notification bell, but make sure to change the set mat layer to the notification button instead of the subscribe button. Adjust the scale as necessary. There's a lot you could do with the colors. One thing I like to do is have a slight color ramp from the pinkish to red and the light blue to dark blue. You could also add a turbulent displays, make sure it's before the set mat though, and then duplicate with different color layers beneath it and adjust the turbulent displacement settings to get a look that kind of looks like this. I've also added a background image in my example, but since the set mat didn't work, I instead chose to just duplicate the background layer, place it on top of my animated background, 
and then use an alpha mat under the track mat settings. To get this lower third to just disappear, I just created a null object and parented everything that's not parented to something else already to the null. I set a keyframe for position on the null layer and move the null off screen. You can get creative here, but for me, this simple trick works. So that's it. All you need to do now is export this. If you're using Premiere, you could export it QuickTime animation with RGB and alpha settings. If you're using a program that doesn't support alpha video, you can just add a green solid behind everything and make sure to key this out in your editing software. But just be aware, any green in your logo might cause problems here. So that's it. I hope you learned something new. To download the project file, you can check out our Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching.